first base. Salarte will be at third. Matt Kevin, right field. Justin Upton cleaning up in left field. Jed Jerko is at shortstop. Derek Norris will be catching Robbie Erlin, Melvin Upton Jr. in center field. And Corey Spangenberg will get a start at second base. It is Johan Flande that they will be facing. The left-handed starter making his 10th start of the year. Jason, what have you seen that you like from him? His last couple of outings, he hasn't been able to get past that five-inning mark. Yeah, and Johan Flande is an interesting character. He doesn't have what you would say is spectacular stuff, but the thing that he is is he's a good soldier. He goes out there and does what he's asked to do, and he doesn't complain about it. When he is on, he's got that big overhand curveball, and he spots his fastball pretty well. He works inside, outside. He's not afraid to elevate. But what gets him in trouble is when he starts missing out over the plate. Each of his last eight starts, he's given up at least one home run. So for Flande to really get back on track and make an impression for possibly a spot in that rotation next year, he's going to have to start working down in the zone. Yeah, well, when you talk about the rotation next year, you have to like the news today. Jordan Lyles threw a simulated game for the Rockies. Corey, I know you were out there. What did you like from Jordan? Well, I'll be honest with you. His fastball command was right where you want it to be. Most of the time when a guy's out there throwing a sim game, and Jason, you would know this better than I would, the first time you throw to hitters, it's very difficult to throw strikes. But I thought his slider looked great. His fastball command looked great. He threw right between 30 to 35 pitches. He faced Genoa, Barnes, Paulson, and not a single guy hit one baseball hard. So that's also a very good sign. Wasn't it you today, or was it Spilly, that asked Paulson if he hit one out of the park? Yeah, and I, and I, I said no. He hit one, hit one out of shortstop. Oh, yeah, and he said <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. Not at all. So yeah. that's good news. I yeah. think the, the plan for Lyles is to try and get... 40 innings somewhere yeah. this offseason, whether it's winter ball or uh, fall. Yeah, he's got, a, he's got a road ahead of him that, you know, the Rockies have already paved it out. They know what, what they want him to do. They want him to get some innings under his belt. They want him to kind of just get some confidence back after having that toe injury this season. And it was great that he came out today and threw well. And like Corey was saying, he threw that ball and he didn't have any, uh, any quality. He didn't have any issues guarding that toe. He threw lots of strikes. And that's a good thing moving forward for the Rockies and for Jordan Lyles to come into spring training next year ready to compete for a spot. We will take a quick break when we return. We are getting you all set for first pitch right here.
stand for the Rockies. They won their first game last night against the San Diego Padres. That's a good start to a 10 game homestand. Tonight, game two. Let's send it over to Drew Goodman and Jeff Houston with the call tonight, guys. All right, Jenny, thanks very much. Yes, last night it was certainly a good start to the homestand in the series as the Rockies prevailed by three runs. I want to talk catching a little bit uh, with you. Dustin Garneau and Tommy Murphy getting a lot of opportunity to play here in the month of September. And so far, especially from a receiving standpoint, you have to like what you're seeing. You really have to because these guys are being put in a situation where they're getting an opportunity to shine. And, and to be able to go out, you know, maybe tonight it's Tommy Murphy, last night Dustin Garneau, but they're flip-flopping. And, and they've all done everything that you could hope for. Dustin, again last night, he must like Fridays because last Friday in Seattle, he drove in three runs with the home run. Last night, he goes two for four with two more RBIs. So every at bat you get in the big leagues is just a momentum builder for you as you go in the offseason. Tonight, he's not starting, but Tommy Murphy is. And another chance for Tommy to, to get a hit, get his first major league hit tonight. Uh, it's coming tonight. Yeah. Absolutely. Murphy, a third round pick out of the University of Buffalo. How about Garneau? Originally a 19th round selection. You got to love when those guys make good. Let's go right now to the Coors Field parking lot and check in uh, with the third member of our crew, Mr. Spielborgs. Thanks, guys. I am in lot A right now in Coors Field parking lot at the championship for the barbecue at Coors Field. I wore a red tie for a reason because I'm going to use it as my napkin as I go around, walking around, trying the different barbecue. I should be having some fun. I'm definitely going to be full. I'll talk to you guys later. Back to you. As long as we get some, we're good with uh, what you're doing this afternoon. Rockies looking to make it two straight against the Padres. Colorado, San Diego, come on back to Coors Field with us. be a prettier early evening on a Saturday in lower downtown Denver. We are certainly glad you are along with us. The Rockies and Padres in the middle game of a three-game set in front of the Pittsburgh Pirates arriving at the start of the week. Johan Flande going to the Coors Field mound and it'll be Will Myers playing first base and again leading off for San Diego. Let's take a look at the Southwest batting order for Pat Murphy tonight. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. 
somewhat similar lineup to what we saw last night from the Padres. Solarte, Matt Kemp, Justin Upton, Jed Jerko in the middle, Derek Norris. Melvin Upton for the third time this year, a three-hit game. He's really come on offensively. Corey Spanschenberg will bat eighth, and Robbie Erland will be making his 2015 debut. Well, Flande has not won since August the 20th. It's been a rough September so far. Well, he's coming off the shortest start of 2015 for him, the game in Seattle. He only lasted two and or three and two thirds, six hits, four earned runs. He has pitched better here at home where he's two and one with the 466 compared to out on the road with us at 533. Part of the problem that Johan has had is the home runs. He's given up home runs in seven straight ball games. Prior to that, he hadn't given up any, so you see the number of home runs. So for Johan tonight, he's got to shave the corners and, and really keep the ball away from the middle part of the ballpark or the middle part of the plate. So Johan Flande is ready to go. Let's quickly check the defenders for the Rockies behind Johan. I'll tell you what, we'll do it after we get uh, a couple pitches out of the way. Will Myers is ready to go. Johan Flande is a guy that throws a lot of strikes and is aggressive. And he works quickly, which fielders love behind him. So the first pitch of the evening, a curveball, and it's in I there like for that. strike one. Yeah. Oh, Will Myers is a very aggressive hitter. He likes to, to hunt the fastball. He's not your prototypical leadoff hitter. He's more of the middle to, you know, run producer. So he'll look for a fastball first pitch. And that at the bottom of the strike zone, but it's called a ball. One ball, one strike. Phil Cuzzy is the home plate umpire. Gabe Morales, Tony Randazzo, Jerry Davis, first through third. Two balls and a strike. The Padres have lost six of eight. They're two and five on this road trip. After they finish tomorrow against the Rockies, they'll head home. This ball's well hit to left field, and Kyle Parker leaps and makes a catch. Nice adjustment by Parker because he got turned around a little bit. Shows you the athletic ability of Kyle. With the right-handed hitter, the ball will hook on you, and this is what this did to Kyle. So he adjusted as he's going back on the ball, and that's the quick football feet that you see from Kyle, where he just shuffled the feet, went the other way, opened up to his uh, arm side, and reached across his body. Now Clemson got a scare, but held on and beat Louisville a couple of days ago. It uh, pleased Kyle Parker quite a bit. We were chatting about that yesterday around the cage. 1-0 on Jan Hervé Solarte, and that's pulled foul. Here's the Rockies defensively. Parker Blackman, Gonzalez in the outfield. They're not a Reyes LeMahieu Rosario in the infield. And Tom Murphy, as we established earlier, doing the catching. Walt talked about the two catchers in his pregame press conference today, saying that more than likely, unless it's Jorge De La Rosa, where he's going to match up Wolin, these guys are going to alternate every other game. Yeah, get, get them some experience here in September. Two balls, two strikes. Misses inside three and two on Solar Day. He's one of the bright spots for the Padres this year. Solid numbers 272, 12 home runs, 50 plus RBIs, switch hitter. So the fourth toughest to strike out in the National League, just one strikeout every 10.6 at bats. It's a classic case of tell me what he could do, not what he can't do. He's not a, he's not a, he's a below average runner. He has okay range at third. But guess what? He puts the bat on the ball, and, and he's productive. He's a ball player. He's a guy you have to watch night in and night out. He's not just a, a scout guy. Yeah. There's Nolan, and he's got plenty of time. Two outs. And that'll bring up Matt Kemp. That 
was 0 for 4 walked in the ninth inning yesterday. The only blemish on an otherwise solid ninth inning for John Axford as John earned his 24th save of the year. Whoa, that one, out. that one slipped. Just a bit outside. Not much you could say about this pitch other than yeah, just give me another baseball. Let's try that again. Murphy's got to make that play. <laughs> Got to jump out of his crouch. <laughs> jump up high. Tom, we're only kidding. Here's the 2 0. And it's 3 0. It is a beautiful night for Rockies baseball. 75 degrees this afternoon. And Ball four. So Kemp wanders down to first, and that'll bring up Justin Upton. Rockies fans, join in on the conversation. Send us your thoughts, and photos, use Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, and make sure you include the hashtag Toyota Talk. Justin Upton. He was one for four at an RBI and also a walk last night. And one hop at Nolan. He has a choice. He could have gone to DJ. Instead, he goes across to Aline, and that's all for the Padres. And we'll see the Rockies offensively when we return to Coors Field on a beautiful Saturday night. Glance at the lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It features Charlie Blackman up top. And then it's Jose Reyes, Arenado about third. What likes to do that against left-handed pitchers? And Cargo slips into that cleanup spot. Then Rosario, good numbers against Robbie Erlin. DJ LeMayhew, Tom Murphy, Kyle Parker, and Flande. This breaks a string of 148 straight games for the Padres starting a right-handed pitcher. Robbie Erland throws lefty. What's going on? Well, and he was the lap, last left-hander to make a start for the Padres. That was last year, the last game of the season against San Francisco. So Robbie Erland kind of making some history here with the Padres. Four and five in 11 starts. 2014 against the Rockies in four games. He's one and one with the 689 ERA career. He's not going to overpower you. And a lot of the Rockies, like Charlie Black, and have some familiarity with them, and it's a good start. Charlie punches a single the other way. 
take a look at the Padres defensively. In the outfield, it is Justin Upton, his brother Melvin, and Matt Kemp, and then it's Salarte Jerko, Spangenberg Myers left to right in the infield. 21st start at shortstop now for Jerko, and Derek Norris is behind the plate. Reyes had a two-run single in the ball game last night. Jose in from the right side. Let's see if he pushes a bunt here. Yep, there he goes. Robbie Erlin's low throw down the right field line. Blocked him into third. Stu Cole is going to hold him right there. Second and third. Nobody out. Small ball again. These guys did it the other night in L.A. where they both dropped bunts down to, to start the ball game. But Charlie gets on with the leadoff single to left. And Jose puts one out in front of home plate in that no man's land between the pitcher and the catcher. Robbie Erland comes in, bare hands it, and then throws it back in towards the runner. Charlie reaches second and rounds third. Stu was about halfway between third and home when he stopped Charlie. So it'll go down as a base hit and then an E1. Here's Nolan, a chance to do early damage. Nolan owns a home run against Robbie Erland. He's one for four, three RBIs. Nolan sitting on 39 home runs. 40 has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? It does. If you do that, then the other nice ring that comes along is 115 RBIs. That's kind of a nice round numbers. I like that. Both of those work. This ball worked to left. Not a home run, but it'll count for RBI number 113, one nothing Colorado. Sweet swing and Nolan Arenado. Feeding the pitches on the inside part of the plate, and he is going to crush you. And he did on this pitch from Robbie Erland, down and in. That's so proficient at pulling that ball there. Just like he needed to. Just keep this train of movement, because the Rockies are 43 and 19 when scoring first. Nobody out. Cargo, an opportunity to do some damage. Cargo's 0 for 3 with a walk. Does have an RBI against Robbie Erlin. And that's going to be a base hit to left. And that'll drive in a run. 2 to nothing, Colorado. For Cargo, his 89th RBI. They're saying welcome back to the big leagues, Robbie Erlin. Four straight singles greet Robbie Erland. I like what the two left-handers have done. First Charlie, and then Cargo. They take him the other way. Four-seam fastball. More towards the label. I mean, it wasn't the sweet spot. He drops it in. He knew he had the runner at third base to be able to drive in if he just got the ball in the air. And then it fell in front of Justin Upton in left field. How about this? First and second. Nobody out. Four hits. Two runs in. And Robbie Erland saying, man, it wasn't like this down in El Paso for me. And here comes the baby ball. Three for five with a double against Erland. This this is hard to believe the Rockies this year are 8 and 28 against left-handed starters And you look at some of the all-time worst marks since 1914. It's not a list you want to be on And I don't I don't I don't get it. I mean Aaron has been the most productive right-handed hitter in the league And you have two left-handers that can hit left-handers, Cargo and Charlie. DJ, what he's done against uh, everybody this year. Yeah, Nick Hundley behind the way. It just didn't make sense. It didn't uh, add up. Yeah, yeah. yeah, DJ hitting over 300. It, yeah, it just, it's one of those ones that has you searching. It's fouled off. One and two.
Arenado at second, Cargo at first. That misses two and two. Rockies with their win last night, 32 and 40 now at home. Good eye. If the Rockies score seven or more as they did last night, go to participate in Colorado Taco Bell locations the following day between four and six to receive your Rockies taco special. Hope you took advantage of that earlier today. Still nobody out. Again, four straight singles. It's two to nothing, Rockies. And that's inside. They're loaded up for LeMayhew. Come back from being down one two in the count and work the walk. You know that Pat Murphy and Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, thinking about their options early. Big shift on in the outfield to the right side. And this is to short. DJ's got to get up the line, and he's out at first. The run scores. Arenado makes it 3 0, but uh, DJ grounds into a 6 4 3 double play. Pretty close at first. DJ's kind of hanging around the bag, waiting for the video inside. Wow, that is close. That is close. That is and it had really to take close. it on the Subaru Super Mode to see how close it was. And they're not going to challenge it. No RBI for DJ. Car goes at third. Here's Tom Murphy. Perfect time to get that first big league hit. Ribby come along with it. You know, and from a comfort level, you're facing a guy that type of guy you saw in Triple A this year. That helps, but you just want to get that first knock out of the way. Yeah. And there it is, first major league hit for Tom Murphy, and he makes it four nothing as Cargo comes around and first RBI. Out of boy, Tom. Everybody signaling from the dugout. Get that baseball, and here it comes. There's some cheering going on at the University of Buffalo. This base hit for Tom. Yeah, cut cut it fastball. Got the, yeah. Good for him. Good swing. Fall through. Head down. Always nice to relive your first major league hit. Tom will do this the rest of tonight, tomorrow, this winter. Two strikes on Kyle Parker. It's been a struggle for Kyle. To throw out a hit in that ball game where the Rockies ended up with just two hits against the Dodgers and Wood. This is a bouncer to Jerko. That'll end the inning. But the Rockies produce a four spot in the first inning. And Tom Murphy has his first big league hit, first big league RBI.
Okay, thanks, Drew. I'm here with Jamie Gear. He is the inventor and the pit master. This is your invention. What what is this? Um, this right here is the Cadillac barbecue pits. Uh, right here, um, these little old pits right here. Um, at this this right here is a who's who of barbecue. In this event right here. I mean, this is probably the toughest barbecue contest in the state of the whole United States. This really? year. And I have 10 pits represented here, so that tells you how good these jambos are. That is awesome. So, what's your secret ingredient? Um, well, to the pits. No, to your barbecue. Salt, pepper, and garlic. I mean, simple as that? Simple. You know, keep it simple is better most of the time. This right here is some good, good stuff, so hopefully we'll get to walk up there number one today. All right, I'm going to vote for you. Guys, back to you. Got to keep it simple. I always say that around the barbecue. <laughs> Salt and pepper. And garlic. No, garlic. Don't forget garlic. Garlic, that's a given. That's a given. Jed Jerko's at the plate, one and one. Four nothing, Colorado. Well, not a missed. It's one and two. Right where Tom Murphy had called for that slider. He wanted it down and in. He put it there. It's Jerko just didn't fish for it. Goes inside with a fastball at 91, and it's three and two. Derek Norris on deck. Rockies produced seven runs last night with nine hits. Padres four runs, eight hits. And this is popped up on the right side. DJ comes over from the left side to make the catch one out. The day after every Rockies victory, get 50% off your online order at Papa John's. The promo code's Rocks win at PapaJohns.com. One out, Derek Norris at the plate. Got to ask Corey if he used that today or last night after he got off the broadcast of the post game show to find out something tells me he did oh yeah two and O on Norris two for three with a home run against Johan Flande. Two and two. Great start for Norris in his new uniform. April through June, 11 home runs, 45 RBIs. But July, August, and half of September, just two home runs, just 13 RBIs. Pulled off considerably. That's a base hit left side. First hit for the Padres. With one out and one on, we'll see Melvin Upton Jr. Every Sunday home game this season is bike to the game, including tomorrow. Get more information at Rockies.com slash green and bike to the game. So how how far would it be from your house if you had to bike to the game? About 20, 20 yeah. miles or so? Yeah, right about have to there. get a little earlier start then. You're going to go Sunday? You need to get on the bike? No, I'm, I'm a little further out. I'm probably 25 miles, so not, not tomorrow. I'll race you. <laughs> Might be a good way to work off some barbecue, isn't it? Hint, hint, Spilly. Yeah, we haven't received any yet. One and one. while when you see that a left-hander step off the back and whip its sidearm real quick on occasion I watch that when he caught that the ball goes up the uh, that right field line this is hit to Nolan he's only got one play and that's to get up in at first two outs chopped right off the plate you can hear the thud 
Went up to swung and, and made contact. Nolan wisely gathers it, throws to first base. Don't try to get that lead runner where you catch this. Listen to it, right? You see it right off the plate, right? In the front part of it. Spangenberg takes a breaking ball outside. Well, I think over time he'll fit in okay at second base. Still a work in progress. Well, a lot depends on what they do with Jerko. If they decide over the winter to leave him at shortstop or flip him back to second, I have to believe. That he's going to move back to the right side. Wouldn't you agree? I would think so. He's handled himself he nicely. It's not a knock on what he's no, done. Not at all. At short. And he played short in college. And he was a terrific shortstop at West Virginia. Uh, an award winning shortstop at West Virginia. They, they may look at it and say, okay, you know what? He makes the everyday play. Not great range, but he, maybe he'll be more of a Johnny Peralta type. I think it. it you ask any manager say if they hit the ball to him is he going to be out now you everybody would like to have super range but it's not possible but is he going to catch the routine ball make the double play when it's needed yep three and one that's a pitcher on deck with first base open so very good chance Spangenberg doesn't see much of a pitch to hit here Did three and two, but it was an off-speed pitch. It wasn't a, just a fastball. Got the knees to buckle of Spangenberg. Looks like they want a high fastball. That's what they got. Spangenberg needs a new uh, bat. Rockies right out of the gate with four runs, five singles in that first inning. And you can see the pitch usage from Johan, and what makes him effective is you don't know what pitch he's going to throw and what count. You, you have the percentages, of course, but you don't know. I mean, 2 0 is not automatically a changeup or an automatically a fastball. Sliders fouled off. Pretty shot. The sports complex is pretty busy right now. I see you and CSU playing across the highway. That's ball four. So with two outs and two on, Robbie Erlin will come up. Erlin, another one of those pitchers that throws left and hits right. With every challenge call, the Subaru Eyesight Review will determine the outcome. Love, it's what makes a Subaru a Subaru. First at bat in 2015 for Robbie Erlin. And he takes a strike. Norris at second, Spangenberg at first. And a broken bat one hopper to Reyes to DJ. Is he out? Ooh, boy. That was close. Spangenberg, the luxury of not being held on, and he has the uh, wonderful ability to run, and that was bang, bang in second. Those are the little things middle infielders need to know. You have to know that he's quick, 
So he's got some extra hop, and then the throw takes DJ to his left, foot on the bag by a half a foot to get Spangenberg. Rocky's up 4 0 in the middle of two. Hometown Toyota stores, Toyota, let's go places. And by Southwest Airlines, book your low fare now at southwest.com. Barbecue fest outside, we still haven't seen Spilly. I guarantee you, he has barbecue sauce on his uh, outfit today. Somewhere. That's how you do it. Nachos and dipping dots for dessert. It's a balanced meal. Robbie Erlin to Johan Flande, ball one. Yeah, that's a strike. Side corner. That's one and two. One out. First strikeout for Erlin. California kid. That third round draft pick of the Texas Rangers in 2009 was Robbie. He was going to go to. San Luis Obispo, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, good baseball program there. Signed with the Rangers. He came in the Mike Adams deal a few years ago when Texas was making a run and wanted another elite bullpen arm and traded several prospects to the Padres for Mike Adams, who was an elite setup guy at that point in his career. Charlie had a base hit through the left side his first time, 0 1. Some of the names down in the minor leagues, and I'll explain what I mean here in a minute after this pitch. Charlie drives this ball toward Upton. He can't get it. Or toward Kemp, and he can't get it. And Charlie to second with a double. Charlie's two for two. Yeah, and, and Matt came in on this ball first. He started to chase it in and then had to retrace his steps and go back. By that time, it was too late. 
Charlie gets into second base. Charlie's playing in his 143rd game of the season tonight. Last year he played in 142. Here's Reyes. Had a bunt single his first time. Well, I was going to say, Robbie Erlin, 24 starts this season for the El Paso, El Paso Chihuahuas. For the Chihuahuas. Yeah, I mean, doesn't everybody name their team that? No, just El Paso. <laughs> <laughs> this ball's lined toward the gap in left center, cut off by Justin Upton. And that's the second out. <laughs> Oh, check this out. Uh -huh. We've got the CSU group together. Scotty Moriyama, Jim Kellogg just to the right, and Jenny, and Scotty Garrett, and Dallas Davis is in there. Dallas was a tremendous player. He's worked for the Rockies now for a number of years. He was a tremendous player at CSU and played a little bit in the uh, NFL. I think it's Scott, Scotty. Oh, even, he's, he's, he's got his green. Green. Now, Scotty has made so many players aware of Colorado State and he a lot of times he converts them to being Rams fans and case in point your Tori Alba he's Tori Alba all once the football season started Tori Alba when he played for the Rockies was oh, his undershirt was always a, a CSU always. Rams football uh, or shirt or something CSU on it. this ball line the left here's Blackman around third here's the throw from Upton not going to get Charlie it's five nothing Nolan with another RBI He's got 114. That hit was identical to his hit in the first inning. Well, you're going to throw it in the same spot. You're going to get it hit there. He went down and in. His first at bat. Tried to go away. He came back in. And I know Pat Murphy sitting in that dugout for San Diego. Recruited Nolan to go to ASU, but he's come out on record saying that he should be in the talk and discussion for MVP. He showed it in this series. He is an RBI machine. Leads the National League in total bases as well. Leads the National League in extra base hits. Second in slugging. Second in home runs. Cargo's third in home runs. He had an RBI hit to left his first time. This one is going to be near the stands. We'll see if there's a play. And it went, I think it went off of the glove of Spangenberg. Or his hand, his glove might have come, come in contact with the fan's hands. Once it goes into the stands, see the umpire signal. No interference. Yeah, it did go off the fan's hands first. Subaru Super Mo. He almost wore that. Oh, one. Cargo had a rip there, and it's nothing in two. One more impressive number about Nolan and the, all the RBIs that he's had with the 114. 51 of them have come with two outs, or 44.7%. Clutch. You know, your two leading RBI guys have both been clutch. Nolan is you just stated and this guy at the plate I mean, how many go ahead home runs or tying home runs as he hit this year Rockies have already out hit the Padres seven to one we're in the second inning five nothing bullpen it's Despagne getting loose and cargo strikes out to end the inning another ribby for Nolan Arenado after the double by Charlie Blackman five nothing
Bit with Ryan Spilborg. Spilly, what do you have? Mm. Sorry, guys. I'm still eating food. I got sitting here with the master judge. I got another barbecue to finish, and you know what? I got to vote in this thing, so when I come back, I'll tell you who won this whole barbecue thing. Get out of here. Back to your drill. This is delicious. <laughs> that one's good. What one was that one? <laughs> What, what happened well, I, in not I, talking I, with your mouth full? I have no idea. But he had two other things on each leg that was full of barbecue, and you know he was going to spill on his on his nice suit. Who's that? You know what? For a guy that is purportedly pretty bright, he does some well, dumb things. Why no, would you, you put? Know why he would you be put the smart on? one out of us out there? Well, he's eating, eating so you know, okay. you know, right? But I mean, he's he had them lined up on his thighs. He's going to wear some of that. Like I said, he's going to wear some of that. What did he say earlier? He's wearing a red tie so he could wipe his face off with it. He wasn't kidding either. <laughs> that's not one of my favorite ties. 1-1. One, one, Myers lines it toward right center field. That's going to kiss off the wall on a hop. Charlie will toss it back in. A leadoff double for Will Myers. And that'll bring up Jan Hervis Solarte. Similar to the area for Will Myers where he hit the home run last night. The right center field. It's got a world of talent, just hasn't been able to stay healthy for a, a full season to put it on display. Yeah, you're right, Hugh. You gotta be able to stay on the field. Strike on Solarte, grounded to third, his first time up. He's hitting 354 in September. They tried to play Solarte last year in particular. They played him some at first, some at second, over at third. Now they just moved him over to third and said, this is your spot. Well, his numbers are almost identical to Chase Headley's numbers. Solarte's making the minimum. Chase, good for him. He's had some good years in the big leagues. One special, special year with the Padres. He's you know, very well paid by the Yankees. But their, their numbers this year are very similar. Both switch hitting third baseman. That's up. Glenn Hoffman. That's out of the way. Standing down there for a lifetime. You know, you got to be careful. Good third base coach. Real good. Yes, it is Trevor's brother. Two strikes on Solarte. And that's hitting the air to Parker. Can he get there? Yep. Nice job by Kyle. We'll bring up Matt Kemp. Nice piece, piece of pitching from Johan. The leadoff batter at second. Solarte's trying to move him over, and they pitched him in, and he flew out to left, didn't advance the runner. Yeah, so Solarte's 272, 12 home runs, 57 driven in. Chase Headley with the Yankees, 267, 11, and 60. I mean, literally almost identical numbers. Identical, but different ballparks. I think Chase Headley hitting left handed in that short porch in Yankee Stadium. Would, would have compared hit a few to more Petco. Home runs, yeah. Yankees beat the Mets today, and Noah Syndergaard 5 to nothing. Just saw they're going to push DeGrom back a couple days. Trying to start to angle for the playoffs. Well, Washington won 5-2, but the, the division separation is still 7. And it would take a monumental collapse. So the Mets are kind of mindful of that. Trying to get those young guys fresh. 
about the Pirates, so they roll into L.A. Trying to catch the Cardinals. They run into Granky last night. That didn't turn out so good <laughs> for them. Granky went uh, seven innings, two runs, and picked up his 18th win of the year. And, and Kershaw goes tonight. That's the National League West schedule. Have fun. One out. Myers at second, inside three and one on Kemp. Kemp's seen only one strike so far. He walked on four pitches his first time up. He's driven in 19 runs against the Rockies this year. He's the most of any player in 2015 against Colorado. Second on that list, Adrian Gonzalez, who's driven in 16. Then Jed Jerko, the Padres, 15. He got him to reach. This one's going to stay in the ballpark, I think. Wow. Yeah, that thing really carried you. Off the bat, there, I didn't think there was any way that Charlie was going to have to go back to the warning trap and be uh, warning track and be a step in front of the wall. Yeah, but by the time it came down on his glove, that's exactly where he was. Well, the first 10,000 fans through the gates for the Rockies Pirates game on September 22nd will receive a coupon for a Hebrew National Dollar hot dog. Get your tickets now. Dougie did a little homework because Kemp with 19 RBIs against the Rockies this year. What he, what do you think the total is for the record for Rippies against the Rockies in one year? He has 19. He has 19. That's not the record. That's not the record. Give me the player and the number. Maybe Sosa or Bonds is going to be my guess. 25. 25 is wrong. Too high or too low? I mean, you don't even give me a. Debating how much help we're going to give you. Uh, <laughs> too low too on the number. Okay. And you have to think, I mean, Sosa is a monster, but I mean, he didn't play the Rockies as many 19 times. times. So that's so why it's going to be the bonds. division. Swung on and missed, two and one. 31. 31 is too high. It's like the price is right. <laughs> 28, then I'll split the difference. Too low. 29. Ding, 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 ding. Okay. <laughs> Now give me the player. He's retired. He sort of has ties to the Rockies. Two and two. He still works in the game. We have the Jeopardy music. Come on. Come on. Hey, we're falling asleep in the truck. Well, Let's I'm go. Just <laughs> two and two. Justin RBIs. Upton up. That's Justin Upton with two outs. That's in the dirt. Three and two. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, Dougie just helped no, you. Well, cheated. I got a little help. It, it's the old game. You can phone a friend. There's a, a lifeline. A lifeline. Who wants to be a millionaire? Phil Nevin. <laughs> Not a good game going. Marino well, got involved. I, there's three, two count, two outs. Wanted to get it in before this half inning. Phil. That's a base hit. Phil Nevin. That's a an RBI for Justin Upton as Will Myers scores. And the Padres are on the board. It's five to one. Seventy-seventh RBI for Justin Upton. And Phil Nevin has ties to the Rockies because his son Tyler, who had a really good rookie league season. He's talking to some people within the Rockies organization and with young guys, a guy like Tyler Nevin doesn't always play out this way, but a little bit of an advantage because, and good for him, first of all, but he grew up in the game, maybe knew a little bit more what to expect, yes. being in a professional environment as a kid. How to, uh, knowing that you have these long bus rides, make sure that you take some snacks on the bus with you, little things. Ooh, oh, boy, that, oh, man. Flande still moving around. That shot all the way down the left field line. That's going to be a double for Jed Jerko off Flande's leg. And now Scotty Garrett is going to go out and check on him. He's grabbing his knee. Is it the left? Ow. Our left knee on the Subaru Supermo.
rocket right back to him. It deflected down the left field corner. Yeah, he, he thought he was going to throw a pitch. He's coming out. Well, the good news is he's put full weight on it. But the Rockies aren't going to mess around with it. So Flande is going to have to leave with two outs in the second inning, runners at second and third. Nobody naturally was up in the Rockies pen with the Rockies up five to one. So see if they go Christian Bergman here or David Hale. Maybe Bergman would be the guess. He's that first long guy up. And it will be Christian. So Bergman makes his way in and he'll take his time warming up. Rockies up five to one in the third. Barbecue for our two great team today, play by play. So here you go. I ate it all. Wait a second. Did you, <laughs> this you is clean perfectly it clean? I ate the whole place clean. Let me see. Let me see your tie. And how about your pants? I'm fine. Professional barbecue muncher <laughs> is not going to get anything. I'm on. not buying that. I'm thinking there's some barbecue back there. Where I know is there it? is. All right, I'll come back with it. I'm still working on it, okay? You was smell it really like good? barbecue, though. It was really, really good. Yeah. The problem is, is they hand you these little cups with barbecue. Yeah. Uh -huh. But when I have all of them together, I can't tell which one's which. So I kind of mixed up the voting. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fine. You got to eat, though, right? Yeah. I'm, have, <laughs> my next hit's <laughs> going to be in a couple more innings. <laughs> you I need, need to break. let that digest? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Back right. to you guys. Yeah, we're, <laughs> the, and take Thanks. your plates yeah. with you, by the way. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. in the food room will be upset. So Christian Bergman with two outs and two in scoring position facing Derek Norris. Last time we saw Bergman, it was in that 16-inning marathon on Tuesday night. He pitched just an inning there because when he was in, the Rockies scored the run to go ahead 4-3. to three. Unfortunately, John Axford unable to close it out, and we continued on. So Bergman's well-rested. And he is in a role that he's comfortable with. It doesn't matter if it's in the eighth inning like he came in the other night in L.A. or here in the top of the third. He's he's that jack-of-all-trades pitcher that every staff needs. Ready to go at a moment's notice. And Walt was talking about it, Christian and Johan today, and he was asking a while. What's the difference? Why why Johan, Why does Johan start and Christian's out in the bullpen? And he said, because Christian is so well adapted at his role, I don't want to take him out of it. And so that's why Christian is, is the long guy. That misses two and two. center field that'll end the inning. Derek Norris flies out. Two men left to board. A run did score, and it's 5-1 Rockies. RM Data Strong Fan, and we'll try to get you into a game coming up brought to you by T Mobile. Rockies lead 5 to 1. So we go to the bottom of the third inning. Drew Goodman, Jeff Houston, and Ryan Spielboards. Willian Rosario against Robbie Erlin. Willian walked in the first inning to load the bases for DJ. DJ grounded into a 6 4 3. Run scored in the process. So here we go with the bottom of the third. That's fouled off. Notice that the Cubs beat St. Louis today 5-4. to four, And the Pirates, we mentioned, are in L.A. taking on Clayton Kershaw. If 
the Pirates fall to Clayton Kershaw and the Dodgers, the Cubs and Pirates would be in a dead heat. Second in the Central. There were five more. games behind the Cardinals. There were some more hit by pitches in that Cardinals Cubs game today. Joe Madden, the pitchers for the Cubs, both ejected. Colt Wong was hit twice. That's in there for a strike. Cards, by the way, can still clinch a playoff spot today with a loss by the Giants. They did clinch it, I should say that. They, they did clinch a spot today. Not that that was any great mystery. I don't think that was in doubt. No, is it? Were they going to win over, or are they going to win over 100 games? Arizona shut out the Giants today. That's fouled off. <laughs> Couple bounces and finally corrals the baseball. Picked up by Salarte. Let's take a look at our Coors Light cold hard facts. Rockies at home the last three years they had a winning percentage of 548. This year, 32 and 40 coming in. The offensive numbers down. The team ERA is up more than half a run. Not a good combination. Average down, ERA way up. That's why you've won only 32 games at home. It's inside. One ball, one strike. Even with that ground out double play by DJ, still four for eight career against Robbie. Chopper to short. And a good transition. Getting ready to baseball quickly. Jed Jerka. It's a gorgeous Saturday evening in downtown Denver. Well, Tom Murphy in the first inning got the first major league hit out of the way. He was 0 for 8. And he lines his single to left and it scored a run as well. Quite a souvenir. Just so much weight's lifted off your shoulders. First, you're excited to be in the big leagues, and then after that, it's I need to get my first hit. Then you get that, you know, okay, I got an RBI too. You just wait for the home run. Did you have an order of things? I mean, do you think are, naturally your first? You want to get the first knock. That that's true for any position player. Did you think RBI or extra base hit next? I thought extra base hit because my first hit also was an RBI hit. Oh, so you got that so out I of the way. Like, yeah. This ball's pretty well hit, but Melvin Upton's out there, and that closes the book on the Rockies in the third. They have a 5-1 lead as we go to the fourth.
Did start in the first inning. They scored four times on five singles, including Tommy Murphy's first major league hit. Johan Flande unfortunately had to leave the game. A line drive off his knee went for a double. So he goes just two and two thirds. Christian Bergman's in there now. Get the Rockies up five to one. Melvin Upton Jr., Corey Spangenberg, Robbie Erlin. Last 62 games, Upton hitting 285. He's put in a lot of work. 15 extra base hits, 15 RBIs. You know, a lot of times I think fans, you will say, yeah, these guys, you know, who establish themselves are making so much money that, you know, it's got to be life on easy street. You and I have both spent some time talking to Melvin Upton. And the money's secondary. When you're struggling, it, you know, Yes, he's he's a very wealthy guy, but he's more concerned that the last couple of years he has really struggled offensively. Well, he has pride. I mean, every ball player has pride in what they're doing. Sure. You don't like to look up at the scoreboard and say, "I hit 178." Yeah, I'm making millions of dollars. No, I'm I'm hitting 178 or 180, 210. So that's why all this work that he's done has paid off. Now he's hitting 249. See, last night he got it up above 250. That's what he came into the game at. Two, two fouled off. Ah. And another base hit for Upton. Just looks like a different player. It's just so much shorter to the baseball. Maybe it's the name change. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't think so. But he, I mean, this year, this is the first year he's gone by Melvin Upton Jr. The only reason I said that <laughs> is because the first couple of months it was still a struggle. <laughs> it's been the last couple of months where things have been better for Melvin. Well, follow the Rockies with MLB.com and bat the number one app for live Rockies baseball. And bat is up to the minute with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat casts, and more. Get MLB.com and bat now. Spangenberg goes to lay one down. Well, the one thing you know about Spangenberg is he can run. So if he does lay a bunt down, get rid of it. Don't. Dilly dally with the baseball because he'll he'll beat it out. Runner going and a ground ball to DJ. Out there, out at first. Good decision by DJ. He just has that great sense about him. He felt he still had an opportunity to turn to and you you've been in that spot regardless you're going to get the out at first because the ball was hit hard and you have to know who's running and we're going to freeze it right when this ball and the runner is right in front of dj so right here you already have to make your decision what am i going to do he knew because of upton having to jump over that ball that it was going to take him a second to land and then to get to second base that's why he went to second you get the double play This is just taking ground balls, knowing how to get rid of it. Excellent underhand feed. And then did you see Jose, how he acted like a first baseman to stretch to get away from the runner to clear himself? And now you're out of the inning. Just like that. As simple as that. Robbie Erlin rolls out. Rockies up five to one, middle of four.
Perky Isotopes jerseys, T-shirts, novelties, and much more at abqisotopes.com. It's a friend from uh, the Albuquerque Isotopes dropped by with some really nice goods yesterday. Albuquerque Isotopes, proud AAA affiliate of the Colorado Rockies. Got some coffee mugs. Got a, a skull cap just in case it turns cold. <laughs> Snow globe. Yep, it's always handy. Kyle Parker is going to lead off for the Rockies at the bottom of the fourth, then Christian Bergman and Charlie Blackman. Side on Kyle. What would you like to see different from Kyle? I think he needs to cut down on some of the strikeouts. Had 29 strikeouts in 88 at bats. What? Shorten the swing up. Yeah, that's what I was really yeah. meaning. What will lead to more success? Well, he's got the barrel out there and he shoots it past Solarte and he's going to end up at second. It's a hard hit ball. We'll see how they score it. He gets a double on it. That was a bullet. This time, he does get to that, that ball inside. Smarte just slow reacting. It was hit hard, but it just didn't really bend the knees to go after it. Gonna score it a double. So Bergman will try to move to third. Bunted in the air. Great effort by Norris. A hard thing for a catcher is you're thinking it's gonna be out in front of the plate. So your first instinct is to move forward. He goes forward and then has to go back to get it. And it fell about six inches away from the glove. Things wrong with that bunt attempt. One, the pitch was up. That's where pitchers like to throw when you're trying to bunt because it, it produced some pop ups. The second thing was Christian kind of stabbed at that ball. Nice. I always said. Be bunting again, you would think. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and put the bat out there and then set the bat at the top of the zone. And that way, if it's, it's above your hands or where you set the bat, then you just let it go. If it's down, you use the knees to go after it. Slug bond. Espanye's up again. Hang it tough. Lead off double by Kyle Parker. Let's see if they just go straight bunt here. No, well, again, it's a slug <laughs> bunt. That may be the uh, first time I've seen three, three straight slug bunts fouled off. There is a new major league record. Unofficially, you have to get that sanction. No, that's official. It's official. It's official. 
and they're playing the music, staying alive. Staying alive. <laughs> Keep it on, Walt. It's working out. Right oh, time. look at that. <laughs> the heck with the ball. That was the greatest at bat in the history of Major League Baseball. <laughs> Go ahead and smile. It's all right. Oh, my goodness. That's his first knock of the year, too. <laughs> yeah. He said, I was just waiting for a pitch I could really handle. He's foul yeah, off the foul ones off. that are dirty. That's right. Yeah. And he finally gets a pitch that he could smoke back up the middle. <laughs> he can't wait. Will, Look at Will's Will got to cover his face, too. <laughs> I can't participate in this. I'm not supposed to yeah. laugh, so I've got to cover my face. They may be uh, looking to bring it to Spagne. Looks like a stall. As Derek Norris goes out to the mound. Well, the Spagne should be ready. But I don't know if they'd want to bring the right-hander in to face Charlie, but Charlie has two hits. Oh, that Murphy said it. Doesn't matter, I'm going to the right-hander. Hey, by the way, Christian Bergman's second major league hit. His first major league hit came in his in his debut last year. Five one Rockies. Yeah. We can finally pat you on the back. All right, so this is from Getting Sauced, first place <laughs> championship barbecue. Um, tell me what you think. First of all, thank you, Butler. Thank you're, you. you're about an hour You know, late. it took a lot to get this barbecue. <laughs> really? Um, I tried it, I loved it. What do you think? First place, right? That's first place barbecue. There we go. See, yeah. that's what I'm talking that's really about. Good. First place. Billy here. Hi, baby. Just for a second, while we finish sure. this up, go ahead and take over. Oh, yeah. you guys are going to eat. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you. <laughs> Drew's leaving. <laughs> go ahead and sit down on right, that chair right there. You and me. Come on. Well, this will be interesting. That'll be fine. Drew's just oh, taking really off. Did he leave. really did leave. How All about right. that at bat for Bergman? You know what? I was too busy getting your barbecue. Wow, so he fouls off four pitches on a, on a slash and then hits one up the middle. And that was enough for Pat Murphy taking out Robbie Earl and going to Despagne. 32 games on the season. Five and nine record. How about the offense tonight, Billy? Nine uh, hits, five runs. I mean, you talk about quality of bats throughout the entire evening, and what's more important is no homers yet. Another base hit for Charlie Blackman. That's been the key tonight is they've take, taken balanced swings and, and just taken whatever, whether it was Erlen or here from Despagne, and just putting the ball in play, making a good solid swing. 
Well, and you love Charlie Blackman's approach. I mean, three for three on the night so far. Here's a pitch out over the plate. Try not to do too much. You're, you're talking about it. Staying in your legs and getting a good swing off. 6-1 Rockies. That's a good start. Did you have fun out there with the barbecue? I did. I had a blast. You looked like you did. I did. Well, I'm I'm really full. I can't. Like, <laughs> like, honestly, like I've you, had. Like you want to take a nap full? I need a nap. Okay. Here comes the 0 one pitch. Gets away from Norris. How about Bergman? Bergman's he doing it all he tonight. He come in and relief. He gets a base hit up the middle. And now he goes to third. On, and this has to be a pass ball. It just clanked off the glove of Norris. Well, Charlie Blackman has to look up to make sure that Bergman's taking third base before he advances to second. That's always a tricky one for the trail runner when it's the pitcher running in front of you. You're right, because those are the guys, those are the cogs. By the way, is this a new suit we uh, got you in Seattle? <laughs> so this is the waterproof suit that uh, Tiffany got us. So I knew coming into today that I could spill some stuff and be okay. Yeah, plus you know you're going to be doing an interview later on where somebody may get doused. Right. Yeah. I was thinking ahead. The white shirt, I wasn't thinking ahead. One-two pitch. There you go. Yeah. Ground at Spangenberg out at first base. Second and third. Drew, take over, please. <laughs> All right. You got to eat again, I suppose. Well, you got to stay. Oh, you got to okay. stay. All right, let's finish. This guy coming up is really good. Hopefully I get to make my first home run call. Well, here's the top five for the championship barbecue contest. Getting sauce is what I just brought Huey and Drew. The Hogtide Barbecue came in second. I was Smokey D's, Clark's Crew Barbecue, Lone Star Smoke Rangers. Round out the top five. It was pretty fun, and it's a blind taste test. So you have no idea what's going on. It's, it's almost behind a screen. They hand you some food and you eat it. It's quite the assignment you had tonight. Be able to go out there and have dinner and get paid for it. I get paid. <laughs> no, wait. They, they, they didn't tell you? <laughs> I've been doing this pro bono all year. And you're still happy. I am very happy. You know who else is happy? Nolan in his first two at bats tonight because he's got two ribeyes because of it. He's Two fastballs in, base hits to left field. Would make it a couple more. Two one. Talked Nolan about Aaron Otto. Yeah. Let's go. Talked a, a number a moment ago after Nolan got his 114th RBI. 51 of his 114 have come with two outs. Now this isn't a two out situation, but it goes to being clutch. There we go, and we, that was a conversation we had earlier today uh, with Richard Bergman from Rocky Zingers, and people at home, you can chime in too. If you get to 100 RBIs, are you considered a clutch player? Huey and I have argued, yes, yes. you get to 100 RBIs, no matter what the team is, no matter what park you play at, 100 RBIs is 100 RBIs. You think about how few guys have got to 100 RBIs this year. That, that's clutch. It's not easy to do. Too far inside, and that loads the bases for Carlos Gonzalez. That was almost a pitch around to Nolan. Now you got to catch up, Drew. We have taken, I have completely Complete taken control. over this, this booth today. We just need it right in this book. <laughs> That's not going to do it justice, the chicken scratch that you write in there, because you can't even read it. I think Aaron Balsley, the pitching coach, is on the phone again for the Padres. Six runs on ten hits for the Rocks. One run, five hits for the Pot. And we're about to get to ten. That's what Drew's calling. I'm calling Grand Slam right here. I love it. Deep house.
But it won't be off the spine yet. Pat Murphy's coming out. He's going to bring the hook with him. Zepchinski coming in. This is when you have a 40 man roster. <laughs> <laughs> They'll bring in one of the eight lefties. Rockies up 6 1, bottom of four. We'll be right back with Carlos Gonzalez's Grand Slam. Carlos Gonzalez is coming up against Mark Zepchinski with the bases loaded. Famous Dave's barbecue seat. You know what? He's he's not here on just special occasions. Oh, he's every here night. every night. And look who's on. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> yeah, that enough, huh? <laughs> You're gonna have to get a bigger suit. You know what? Sometimes the barbecue championship is in your backyard, so. <laughs> Uh, I couldn't get all the stuff for you, so I did the next best I could. Our friends down there, they gave me a nice plate of food for you, Drew and Huey. So that, that was Famous Dave's. Famous Dave's. Famous Dave's. Never, well, you never bad what? day of Famous Dave's. To me, it was number one. Yeah, I, me too. I, yeah. I love the guys. They're, they're great Good people. Good barbecue at Famous Dave's. All right, Mark Zipchinski, he and Cargo, old friends. Seems like every game the last couple of weeks when the Padres and Rockies have been facing off, Zipchinski's had an opportunity to face Cargo. They faced off last night. Cargo hit it to a double play. Look for a different outcome in this at bat. One out. Cargo took a home run hack. Big swing. Christian Bergman, the pitcher, running from third base. I don't know if the wind brought it back or Justin Upton misread it. Because off the bat, you thought, oh, it's plenty deep enough. Then Upton's coming back toward the plate, which is what you want to do as an outfielder. And the throw just a little bit offline. Bergman scores. And then the slide by Charlie, save the third. It's the first run, by the way, that Christian Bergman has ever scored. Out and around, slide to the backside. Charlie did that on the Subaru Super Bowl. Go to our fourth pitcher for the Padres tonight. We'll have the details when we come back.
He's going to have an opportunity to win this game because unfortunately the starting pitcher tonight for the Rockies, Johan Flande, left with a, a knee injury when the ball was lined off his knee, and he just scored his first big league run. A lot has happened for Christian Bergman tonight. Had to run the bases, advanced on the pass ball. Now Marcos Mateo, the third reliever, the fourth pitcher used tonight by San Diego. Right, he's hitting 213 off of Marcos. Just one extra base hit since the middle of July. Two out, second and third. Willine takes a strike. Tough play. Willeen is going to beat it out easily. He gets an RBI as Blackpit scores, and it's eight to one. Hit him with the eight, or at least get it by the pitcher, because <laughs> that's what it did. It just got enough to get by Mateo, and once it cleared him, then it became just a foot race between the shortstop, Jed Jerko, and Willeen hustling down the line. Eleven hits for the Rockies inside on DJ. Book closed on Robbie Erlin. Not pretty in his return to the big leagues. First start in more than a year. Three plus, seven runs, ten hits. He walked one and struck out two. One ball, one strike. Spangenberg gets LeMahieu at first to end the inning. The Rockies get three more in the fourth. They've scored in every inning but the third. And here's your barbecue champion. Congratulations. Rockies up 8 1. Back on the number one Bayou Lexus dealer. The Rockies have thrown out 11 hits tonight. They got four in the first inning on five singles. Carlos Gonzalez 
has a couple of RBIs tonight, a single, and also a sack fly later on. Nolan's driven in a couple, and the Rockies are enjoying an eight to one lead on the Padres. Here's our Cooney Lexus look back. Here in the fifth inning, top of the order, Will Myers to face Christian Bergman. Bergman got the final out in the third after Johan Flandi was hit on the knee by a line drive off the bat of Jed Jerko, and then he had a fairly easy fourth inning. First pitch in there for a strike. Missed. See if Phil Cousin thought about it. See why on the four strike zone, why he thought about it. That's a base hit through the left side. Will Myers continues to swing it well. A pretty exciting thing going on here at Blake Street this February on February 20th, 2016. The University of Denver Pioneer and the Colorado College Tigers will face off at Coors Field in the first outdoor collegiate hockey game in Colorado. Tickets are on sale now at Rockies.com slash hockey. And the rink is going to go from third base to first base in, in case you're wondering how it's going to be laid out at Coors Field. I plan on being here. Neat is that, and it's also as part of the gold pan series for those two teams. Oh, one, this is popped up. Nolan, not gonna have a play. Jan Herbie Solarte, ground ball to third, fly ball to left field. Deep center field, Blackman will make the catch. That reminded me for a moment of the ball last night. Remember, it didn't look like much, and it ended up off the center field wall off the bat of Solarte. Let's take a look at our century link link to what's next. James Shields for the Padres Sunday afternoon. Kyle Kendrick for the Rockies. We're on the air with the pregame show at 1.30 in the afternoon. Matt Kemp, a walk and a fly ball to deep right center. Matt closing in on a 100 RBI season. Third in the National League with the 97 RBIs. How about a ball to play? short? There's one and there is two. 6-4-3 on the double play. Second, the Rockies have turned behind Christian Bergman this evening. It's all Colorado. They're up 8-1.
catchers and former Rock Rockies catching coach Jerry Weinstein. And we top it off with the highlights and best moments of the week. That's tomorrow after the game on Rockies Weekly. We hope you join us for that. Speaking of young catchers, Tom Murphy's coming up here in the fifth inning to face Marcus Mateo. Murphy takes a slider for a strike. Murphy, an RBI single in the first, his first big league hit. And then he had a fly ball to center field in the third inning. Kyle Parker on deck. 8 1 Rockies. Murphy grew up north of Syracuse. About a three hour ride to Buffalo where he ended up going to school. I-90 from Syracuse over to Buffalo. I-94. Yeah, I would think it's 90 cross. This ball's well hit the center field. Up and going back. Still going back. And gone. Tom Murphy. He hit that one to Syracuse. First big league home run. Make it 9-1. Don't even have to barter anybody for the baseball. You get your first home run ball, they just gotta find it in the fountains. This gives you an idea, Huey, what kind of pop he has. Heck yeah. He hits a slider three in a row from Mateo. You have to generate more with the slider than you would a fastball, and he hits it out to dead center field. Maybe a, a slightly to right of dead center, but catches this on the sweet spot of the bat on the Subaru Super Mode. Yeah, he's hit some home runs in the minor leagues, and that was it a long way. Two strike count on Parker. Kyle had a double his last time up. One out. They're still searching. It's quite the expedition they have going on. I'm gonna put camo on. <laughs> Christian Bergman's gonna get another at bat. Found it. Hopefully that's the one. No one will ever know, right? No. Two and zero oh on Bergman. It was nice of that Padres relief pitcher to help out. Go find the baseball. Very nice. That's the closest bullpen, so. Three and zero on Bergman. That's a strike. Three and one. Alan, Alan Bossert, Darren Holmes. Ball four. I don't even want to pitch oh, to Bergman what? anymore. He's got a walk. The X-rays on Johan Flande's knee were negative, which is great news. And it's a strike on Blackman. Charlie's three for three, single, double, single, an RBI, and he scored three runs. It's 53 runs, or 53 RBIs with that RBI last at bat. An 84 run score. Mark 
Marcus Mateo with a one two count on Charlie. Nine runs, 12 hits for the Rockies, no errors. A run on six hits with an error for the Padres tonight. Bottom of inning number five, Tom Murphy hit a home run to begin the inning. One out walk to Bergman, who's at first. Goes to the backstop, a wild pitch will move Bergman to second. Second wild pitch of the ball game. Charged to a Padre pitcher. The three two and ball four, another walk back to back walks. Here comes Reyes. But Padres, with the exception of the third inning, they had a one two three inning in the third. Erland did. The Rockies have had monster traffic on the bases coming into this game. They Padres bullpen their September ERA was 644. Very unlike San Diego. Corner a strike to Reyes. One single for Jose. A line out to left and a ground ball to second. Rockies tonight 7 for 11 with runners in scoring position. So they got the big number on the scoreboard. That didn't look like a strike. It wasn't according to the Ford strike zone, but that doesn't matter. No Cuzzy, the home plate umpire, thought it was. This ball's pulled toward the corner. Stay fair. It is a foul ball. And Jose That's a good thing. It. Yeah, because he did move. He never moved, so. You look at a hitter, and the hitter always has a pretty good idea. Fouls it. He knows it's going to hook, so he just stays at home. Nolan's on deck. He's driven in two. Reyes with one out, and it's fouled off.
got a little drop seat. That's okay. Get the ball back. Pirates have a two to one lead in LA on Clayton Kershaw in the third. goes down two outs that'll bring up Arenado two for two and a walk hey we get tacos everybody two nights in a row the Rockies have scored seven or more don't forget go buy your participating Taco Bell tomorrow between four and six to get your Rockies taco special with Masa Taco Bell Arenado RBI single in the first and the second walked in the fourth Chance for more ribbies for Nolan who's got hundred and fourteen leading the National League only Josh Donaldson has more in baseball In my estimation it's going to be a unanimous MVP in the American League Be hard to argue with that. Given where Toronto is, that's one that fits the bill. You know, yesterday we had some much debated about, you know, can an MVP come from a team that's below 500, a team that's not going to the playoffs, that sort of thing. Well, in this case, they're going to the playoffs, and he's been terrific. Something wild too. Think about this. Cespedes is going to win the MVP, but a lot of people want to throw him in the debate because of what he's done for the Mets since the All-Star break and take what was a help take what was a more abundant offense and turn it into a, an elite offense. And so then you uh, you look at Oakland a couple of years ago. They had both Cespedes and Donaldson. Donaldson is going to be the American League MVP for Toronto, and Cespedes won't win it with the Mets, but. He's one of the most talked about offensive players now in the National League. Three and two. That might be a case where Billy Bean wishes he could have a do over. <laughs> Can I have a do over on those trades? I'd like both those guys back. But you don't get that. You, you make the trade. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but that one didn't work out for Billy. Well, more than virtually any general manager in baseball, Billy. Billy Bean's never been afraid to pull a trigger on a deal. Nolan strikes out, and that will end the inning. Rockies get a home run from Tommy Murphy in the fifth. His first career big fly. Colorado leads 9-1.
Bob and Barbara, these are people that have actually gone and seen all 30 Major League seasons. Now, or stadiums, it's taking you guys a long time to see all these fields. When did this whole quest to see all the baseball fields start? 2006. So it took you nine years. Nine years to complete it. Yep. And why was Coors Field the last field you had to pick? Because, to be honest, it's the most isolated of the group. It's out by itself. It was like Minnesota. That was the one we did last year. It's just kind of out there. Now, we were talking during the break, and you guys love to just make sure you watch the game. So you have to plan during a game. What is your favorite baseball field that you've gone to? I think Wrigley Field is my favorite. Um, I love the old, just the old field. It's, it's old. It's original. Yeah, it's hard to see sometimes if you're behind a, a pillar. And what's yours? I'm Pittsburgh. I love the new style. I love the view. Well, and I think a lot of Drew and I, we probably agree we've loved Pittsburgh as well, but Coors Field has the mountains, and you guys said you didn't see them. Guess what? They're hiding over there. It's just dark. I'm going to have to get up higher next time in this story. Next time I come, I'll sit up higher. Yeah, so where are you guys from? We're about 100 miles north of Toronto in Ontario. Yep. Well, obviously, this has been a tough year for Rockies fans because Tulowitzki has gone to Toronto, so now he's part of you guys. Have you embraced Tulo in your in your neck of the woods? Everybody loves Tulo in Toronto now. Yeah, they do. But it's nice to see Reyes out here today. Good. So you guys have been doing the chant with Jose Reyes? Well, we've been in stirring, stirring it up as Reyes started with us. Okay. So after nine years of seeing it, are you going to start doing something else? Is there another thing you guys want to accomplish? I have a new quest. It's to see every farm team of the Blue Jays. Wow. Yeah, and I'm up for that. I've, I've certainly learned a lot more about baseball in nine years. That's awesome. Drew, well, guys? Uh, they started in New Hampshire. They're double-A affiliates not that far away. It's beautiful in the White Mountains. That's true. You guys can start in New Hampshire. That's where one of your affiliates is. New Hampshire, New Hampshire you've got uh, Lansing Lugnuts, uh, Buffalo Bisons. They even have a team in the Dominican and Vancouver. Why don't you guys just do all the minor league fields in all of baseball? <laughs> we actually we were in Washington about three weeks ago, sat down with a guy who had been to 361 different fields. Okay, so here's my challenge to you. All minor league ballparks and then go to Japan and do a little winter <laughs> ball too. Sounds wonderful. And Smilly's paying for all of this. Please note. <laughs> All right, well, we'll we'll comment on the game for a little bit. That you know what? That what a That's wonderful a, trip. Yes. That's a wonderful trip. Yep. And uh, welcome to our fair state, and welcome to Coors Field. How about the folks that have been to 361 stadiums? That would be cool. There's so many great minor league venues. You played in a bunch of them. I, I did, but not that many. And just as a fan to go to some of these different parks to see the the nuances, the, the small town, get that feel. If, if you've played in 361 of that's, them, that's, <laughs> it's time it, it's time to it's hang like, them up. It's like a Crash Davis yeah. in Bull Durham. <laughs> Spilly, making new friends making everywhere friends you go. Making friends everywhere. Huh? Well, today, since these guys behind us have seen so many baseball games, this is Marina. It's her first Major League game. What do you think so far? It's really cool, and I love all the players, and they're all doing really great. Do you have a favorite player? Um, well, so far, Blackman's doing really well. I like him. Do you like his beard? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so are you? have you always been a Rockies fan and just never had a chance to see a Rockies game? Never had a chance to see a Rockies game. Come on, take her out to more games. <laughs> all right. Well, do you go to school? Are you in school right now? What grade are you in? Fifth. Fifth are you going to tell all your friends that you were at a Rockies game and you were on Root Sports? I have a friend that loves coming to the Rockies game. So. All right, this is a high fly to right field. Your bad luck. Sorry, Marina. Guys? <laughs> That's not right. She's <laughs> not, not bad fault. luck. <laughs> Jed Jerko goes opposite field, and it's 9 to 2. Billy, do not be mean to the young fans in attendance. Home run number 15 for Jerko. Well, immediately, I looked at Cargo to see what his reaction was, and he was just kind of jogging back after it. The only chance is if it didn't go out that he was going to have to play it off the wall. So 
There she go and yeah, we, it, it sounded hard. Yeah, we've seen that deke enough and and you could tell why, yeah, yeah. And you could tell he got it pretty good. Derek Norris at the plate. Single and a fly ball to center field. Derek Norris didn't think it was. But Phil Cuzzy, if he's called anything, it's been maybe two or three inches off of each corner, whether it's inside or outside. Hasn't done much north and south with the strike zone. That's fouled off. One out. And a 3 2 count on Norris. Strikeout for Bergman. Went there 3 1. That was pitch number five. Goes back to it on pitch seven. With those two strikeouts now, that gives the Padres 1,253 this year. That's their third highest total in. Padres history. Casey Kelly, one of the right handers out there, along with Jay Jackson. Jed Jerko did hit a home run, but the Rockies are up 9 2, middle of six. Jeff Houston, Ryan Spielborgs. Here's our Data Strong fan photo brought to you each night by T Mobile. That's a beautiful vantage point, good friends. 
Some Padres changes to tell you about. Alex Dickerson is now in left field for Justin Upton. You have Travis Jankowski in right for Kemp. And Rocky Gale is behind home plate for Derek Norris. And we also have a new pitcher, Jay Jackson. Got all that? Yeah, I got all that. I was just finishing writing it in on my book to make sure I had everybody in the right position. If the one guy in the number one position would be Jay Jackson, faced one batter last night, gave up a base hit to Dustin Garneau. Now, Walt has to make sure he knows who's going in where, what spot in the lineup, who's hitting here. As soon as they get it all figured out from what Pat Murphy gave the home plate umpire, Phil Cuzzy, we'll let you know. <laughs> have a little laugh about it, too. I think you're just uh, the old uh, Abbott Costello who's on first. Pretty close. We know this much. Carlos Gonzalez will hit for the Rockies. William Rosario's on deck. 9-2 Rockies. Here in the sixth inning. Rockies got four in the first, a run in the second, three more in the fourth, a run in the fifth on the home run by Murphy, his first career. Side on cargo. Two and Cargo tonight, an RBI single, a sack fly, a couple ribbies, 90 RBIs now for Carlos. Three and oh. in there three and one. And a walk. Andre's mission a few of those tonight. Rosario walk, ground ball to third, and he had an infield hit to drive in a run. 26th RBI of the year. Called strike. Jackson originally signed by the Cubs as a ninth round pick in 2008. And baseball at Furman. This Colorado kid going to Furman next year to play baseball. Gonzalez Germain warming. School baseball that's played in the state of Colorado. It's really raised its profile nationally. High school baseball in our state. This ball's line to center. Cargo will stop at second. Well, the Rocky Scout team has helped raise that. That level, Wayne Dolan and Jeff, and all the people behind that, the Rockies included. Yeah, it's become a very successful program. So 
DJ up with two on. Go for three this afternoon. And this evening, I guess. Inside. This is about the time that he'll just put one of those patented line drive base hits to right field. Two. Nobody out. Cargo at second. Rosario at first. Gotta be happy. LSU big win oh, over Auburn they? today. Running back ran for over 200 yards for LSU. Was it Fournette, 233. Even in two, two and two. Jackson keeps pitching up to DJ, and he's going to leave one where he could do some damage with it. Keep flirting with disaster. The pitcher tonight, Jay Jackson. Well, that was off. the one. I think if DJ said, "Can I have that one over?" Talk about a do-over. Could set that on a tee in the fourth strike zone any better than that six pitch. Hard ground ball. Spangenberg gets it, and that's a double play. Four, six, three. Second time DJ's grounded into a double play, and going to third is Cargo with two outs. They hit it hard. Spangenberg goes and gets it, stumbles, but he was hit so hard that make the flip to Jed Jerko, and he turned it over. So Tom Murphy a single in the first and a home run in the fifth. First two major league hits. And this was a blast. First two major league RBIs, first major league run scored. He's now tied for 154th on the Rockies all time home run list with 48 other guys. And moving, up. It moving up. Moving it's up. Doug to come up with that stat. Ooh, this ball's well hit again to center field. He may have moved up just now. Oh. Oh. Came up a few 
feet short. So the Rockies had a hit and a walk. A man left on. They're up 9 2 as we go to the seventh. you by the Ford Fusion. Power you want and good looks too. Ford, go further. By Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. And by CenturyLink, your link to what's next. Nine-two, the Rockies leading the Padres. Changes to tell you about here in the top of the seventh inning. And we begin in right field where Brandon Barnes has come in for cargo. Then we go to first base, and Ben Paulson has come in for Rosario. And on the hill is Gonzalez Germain. Recorded his first save of the season. That was Tuesday, the second of his career. The last time he had a save was August 15, 2013, against these same San Diego Padres, but it was in San Diego. So Bergman goes three and a third. He stands to get the victory. Terrific job by Bergman. Gives up just a run in three and a third. Hits. Punched out three. Good job by Christian Bergman. A great job. He came in through 47 pitches, 31 for strikes, and he'd only thrown 11 total pitches, and that was that game in, in Los Angeles, Los Angeles that you referenced, but only 11 pitches this whole week. He was called upon on a moment's notice. After Flande went out, he gets a double play off the bat of Matt Kemp. Two double plays turned behind the Bergman tonight. Big strike out of just nothing, and Derek Norris looking. And it's Spangenberg swinging off of Gonzalez Germain. Good way to come in and start. Alex Dickerson will get his first at bat here. Field an inning ago. For El Paso this year, Dickerson, three oh seven. 12 home runs, 71 RBIs. 
played for the Chihuahuas. The Chihuahuas. Second mention of the Chihuahuas tonight. It's always a good thing when you get a couple Chihuahua mentions in a broadcast. I think you take a look two. at their, their logo. To look at that after the game. <laughs> And another strikeout for Jermatt. Man, you can bring your family to the ballpark with the Coca-Cola value pack. It's available September 21st through the 24th against the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's Monday through Thursday for either $59 or $79, depending on seat location. Four tickets, hot dogs, Cokes, and more. The Coca-Cola value pack. Will Myers with two outs and nobody on in the seventh. Dougie's looked it up. It uh, is, it's, <laughs> a, it's a ferocious chihuahua. <laughs> chihuahua. I like that logo. Pretty cool. It is. Strike going two. Myers has had a good ball game, double in the third, a single in the fifth. He also lined down two for three. I'd like to see what this kid can do in the full season of good health. He had a bone spur on his left wrist that he had surgery on back in June. So it won't be completely, all that strength won't be back until next spring. One, two, and again, that's bounced up there. Two and two. The last two, Gonzalez is just overthrown. Tried to make that perfect changeup pitch. And again, three and two. John Harvey Salort Day coming up. Under the hands of strike. Larte ground ball to third, fly ball to left, fly ball to center. Two outs. And Myers at first in the seventh inning. Larte from Venezuela. Rocky scored first tonight. Usually a good sign for any team. They're 43 and 19. Went scoring first, and they scored four in the first, another run in the second. They were five nothing. Strike three, and Jermaine strikes out the side. Sandwiched in here, the walk to Myers. 
Stretch time at Coors Field. Rockies up by seven. Rockies have enjoyed the evening so far. They're up nine to two as we go to the bottom of the seventh, and it'll be Kyle Parker leading off. Rafael Enoa is in the on deck circle. And Casey Kelly's now in the ball game. Fifth reliever for Pat Murphy, and now new third baseman, Brett Wallace. Casey Kelly scheduled to start the Padres game on this Friday in Petco. She's just getting a little work in. I should say next Friday in Petco. Some work in, just called up from El Paso on Monday. And that was an excuse me comeback or one out. So Rafael Noah is going to be the pinch hitter. Be quick tonight, writing in the book all these changes. Been a bunch of them. Takes a strike. Well, if you got seven at bats out on the road trip, a couple of hits. Especially in September, you managers really appreciate uh, any time you appreciate a big lead. But in September, when you can get some of your starters out of there, your veteran guys get a few innings off and Get some of the younger players uh, in a bat or two. And this ball is high to right from Noah. And that's the Rockies' 14th hit. And you have a day game tomorrow. So all that works in any manager's favor. But when you have the lead 9 to 2, you're just looking to get those last six outs. You guys that have played a lot. Carlos Gonzalez. Ward Raffi and Noah, who started the year in the big league. So here's Charlie. Perfect night. Three for three in a walk. 
Driven in a run, scored three. He takes a strike. Christian Adamas has come out on deck. He'll hit for Reyes. One and two. by Jankowski good play well, if you hesitate you're going to be lost and it'll fall in front of you for a base hit Jankowski wasn't lays out charging hard and dives and embraces himself for his fall on the Subaru Super Bowl Christian Adamas will pitch it for Jose Reyes. And that is going to sneak through underneath the glove of Jerko and going first to third is Enoa. Stops this. The only option he's going to have is to come up and make a spin throw to second base to get Adamas, who is hitting from the from the left side. Either way, it's a base hit for Christian. So here's Nolan again. Single, single, walk, strikeout. A strike. That was way off the plate. 0 and 2. Frisbee slider from Casey Kelly. Kelly came over in the, the trade with Adrian Gonzalez and sent Anthony Rizzo over to the Cubs. Two and two. Stood him up. I think he'll go back with the slider away. Yep, he got him. That ends the seventh inning. Rockies had a couple hits, leave two on. They're up 9 2 as we go to the eighth.
Raphael, you know, is going to be at third base and Christian Adamas at shortstop. I mentioned two of those position players for a reason because they were out early today when Jordan Lyles was throwing his simulated game. Jordan Lyles did 35 pitches today using his sinker, his changeup. And when I talked to Pat Burgess, that's the Rockies bullpen catcher, he said his changeup looked a lot better. He was commanding his fastball on both sides of the plate. Basically, Jordan Lyles still has a long road ahead of him, especially this offseason. They're thinking about winter league for him. They're not sure whether it's going to be at fall league, Arizona fall league, or if he's going to play some winter ball in the Dominican or Venezuela, even Mexico. Another guy to, worth mentioning, Tyler Chatwood. He was back from being in the South Atlantic League Championship. He threw three innings in that day, 42 pitches. So it's good news hearing from these two guys making their way back to the majors for next year. Yeah, there's two guys that, that really need to be blessed with good health next year, and that's certainly Tyler Chatwood and Jordan Lyles with what they've been through the last couple of years. He knows is now at third, and Christian Adamas at short. Simone Castro on the mound. Simone getting some much needed work on and it work in here in September seventh game, but a 2 and 0 record. Originally signed by the Padres in 2006 and then was traded to the White Sox in 2011. Two two on Jankowski. Three and two. Front on the slider and uh, strikeout to begin the inning for Simone. Touched on it last half inning, Drew, to get some of these young guys at bats like uh, Christian Adamas, Rafael No, It's also important to get Simone Castro out there, Miguel Castro, those guys, so you get a look at them in September as you start to construct your roster in the offseason moving forward. Bullpens are always interesting in how they're constructed and who's able to sustain roles. It's a big part of it. I mean, it's unusual, not unheard of certainly, but unusual to see a bullpen and the roles remain exactly the same through 162 games. Too hard to do. All the times that you're getting up, you're appearing in 50, 60 games. That's why depth's so important. Pick up guys off the waiver wire. Trades, call them up. But to me, the bullpen's also that one thing that you can fix pretty quick. If it goes, you have other guys that you can slide in there that, that you trust. Got to have depth. The storm that is Rocky Gale at the plate. Now Rocky's got to go away. Blown away by that pitch. Two outs. The last seven outs recorded by Rockies pitchers have come via the strikeout to the Padres. Eight. The last seven outs. And then you had the home run, and then. Yeah, but to go back to one before oh, the, the one home, before run, the home run was a strikeout too. Last the last eight yeah. outs recorded have all been strikeouts. And the Rockies didn't have a strikeout <laughs> prior in the first five innings. That's weird, huh? One and one. Kind of skipped over that strikeout before the home run.
Castro misses there two and one. Two and two. Jerko double and a home run night. The home run over the auxiliary scoreboard in right. Ah, that fastball inside and high. Struck out the side. Dude, that would be nice straight that now. Would be nice. How about Got that? It. Middle eight, nine two, Colorado. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at southwest.com. By Mike Shaw Subaru, always our lowest price in sales and service guaranteed. And by Saratoga Casino, so new, so you. Bright lights of a Saturday night. Ben Paulson leading off here in the eighth inning. Ben hit one off the facade of the third deck in batting practice today. It's a long way. <laughs> Big boy territory. That is. He hit it. That stopped some of the guys from taking their ground balls. They had to sit and admire that one. Second inning of work from Casey Kelly. Strikes out Ben. Paulson gone, one out in the eighth inning. That's his second strikeout. And Kelly will now face Barnes.
Barnes bounces one through the left side. Base hit. 16th hit tonight for the Rockies. The last starter tonight without a hit, DJ. Chance to change that right now. That's right. This ball to the gap in left center field. It's going to run all the way to the wall. DJ's got a hit. In fact, he's got at least two. And given the circumstances of the game, he'll stop at second. Barnes scores. And it is 10-2 Colorado. There. You called it. There you go, DJ. Join the party. I hate to, to be that one guy when there's hits being thrown all over the ballpark and you're left out of the, the parade. But DJ with this fifth at bat comes through. Gives him 161 hits. Second most hits by a Rocky second baseman. Closing in on the first base coach and longtime second baseman, Eric Young Sr. 84 hits. Tom Murphy's had a day he'll never forget. Got his first big league hit, a single in the first to drive in a run. And then he had a home run to dead center his next time up. And he's got a three hit ball game. LeMay, who had the freeze, make sure that got over the head of Jerko, so he'll go to third. Nice ball game, Tom Murphy. Well, kid from upstate New York, making good. He's our Jimmy John's delivery of the game. There's the first major league hit. First major league RBI. He's found the barrel all day. Great thing is, you get both souvenirs. A moment ago, that line shot over shortstop. Kyle Parker fouls this one off. Doubled in the fourth. Kyle's one for four. Bryce Harper in another home run today. He's got 41. Continues to lead the National League. An interesting home run race the final couple of weeks with Arenado and Cargo involved. Washington beat Miami 5 to 2 today. Two two in the bottom of the seventh, the Dodgers and Pirates. And Parker strikes out. Two outs. And that'll bring up Enoa, who's one for one. Just came into the game last half inning. Jason Gurka. Getting loose for the Ninth inning. He's getting loose to play right field.
I saw Chris Russell out there today. He was sh he was power shagging out in the outfield in case that spot comes up when he's not pitching. You know his hand will shoot up in the air. To Colorado, 18 hits, two and one. Rockies have had 18 hits three times in a game. They had 19 hits a season high a couple weeks ago against the Giants. Casey Kelly with two outs, runners at first and third. Rockies have already scored a run here. And you know what? Chops this one foul. Casey Kelly, 2008 Florida's Mr. Baseball. He was 8 1 on the mound with a 116, but he hit 473 <laughs> with five home runs, drove in 31 at Sarasota High School. That'll get your attention. Well, I think he had their attention his junior year when he went 11 0 with an 024. <laughs> <laughs> in Florida. In Florida, yeah. He, he also, by the way, I remember this too, if you, and I think you recall it also. He threw for over 4,000 yards and 37 yes. touchdowns. He was the uh, two time regional player of the year in football. So he had options, shall we say. This ball is lined to left field, and Dickerson will make the catch. We'll go to the ninth inning. The Rockies tack on another run. Three more hits in the inning. They're up 10 to 2. The top of the ninth. Coming up next, we have the Toyota Post Game Show. Looking forward to that. What do we got, guys? You got first things first. Tom Murphy, you got your first hit, your first RBI, and your first big league home run. Congratulations. And quick out of the gates for the Rockies offense. Four straight singles to open the bottom of the first and four runs. Then how about Band-Aid Bergman? He came in for Johan Flande, who left through the contusion of his patella tendon. Things looked good for Bergman, not only on the mound, but at the plate. We'll talk about the relievers as well coming up on the Toyota Post Game Show. Guys, we'll send it back to you. And the winner is Band-Aid Bergman. All right. But I appreciate that you went to Jason first because he kind of got hosed a little bit yesterday. He went in third and, and you know, he admittedly had kind of a weak. Uh, what okay, do you guys call that? Topical. Topical. Yeah. Topical. Yeah. Yes. I thought Jason bounced back nicely. Tonight. I appreciate how you were trying to put Jason down and then you couldn't come up with the put down. <laughs> it was a topical. Listen. Well, this is it, it, it's, one, it's game 148. Bear with me. Okay. Jason Gurka, the right fielder, doing a little pitching <laughs> tonight in the ninth inning. Well, he's, he does have five games this year. 
One of them being in right field. Two and two thirds inning. First guy will face left on left. Brett Wallace. Wallace has been really good off the bench for San Diego. Came to the ball game at third base a couple innings ago. First AB. Huey, I'm telling you what. My scorebook tonight, because all these changes as the Rockies have, have blown out San Diego, it's not quite. But it's getting close to what we produced Tuesday in L.A. How about for was, you? Yeah, I was just looking back at my Tuesday book. I mean, I got black and red and everything else written in between, some yellow highlighted on it. Tonight, not, not nearly as bad. But still, there's a lot going on. Well, you know, here, I don't know if you can see this. You know, the red is, you see, red is good. Red means positive, and so the Rockies see all these colored in. It's for all the runs scored for the Rockies. But look at all these crossouts because they've added a, uh, one, two, three, four. Of course, a couple guys in the pitcher spot, and then all the changes for San Diego and defensively. And here, mine is uh, from L.A. the other day. Go yeah. back to it here in a second. I kind of do things just a little bit different, but you know, I'll highlight. The yellow when guys go into the game and I'll knock them off down here at the bottom. The red scores, so I got my pitches all over the place. So it's I'm glad that you only you and I have to to look at it. Because I'm not I, sure I would be I able actually, to actually I actually tweeted out what my book looked like on Tuesday night after <laughs> the game because it was it was different. Oh and two on Melvin Upton. And that swung on and missed. So Gurkha gets a strike out. And Cody Decker is going to come up. Oh, there it is. Asking, glad he wasn't asking, but <laughs> it looks like a five-year-old coloring book. Well, maybe not that deep. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt afterward. Five hours and 23 minutes, but all's well that ends well, right? Yep. Just looking for one more out here, and then all all's well that ends well, and a 10 to 2 victory. And there it pitch. is. Corey Decker is going to pop out. Whoa. <laughs> Charlie calls off DJ late. He makes the catch, and the Rockies have a convincing 10 to 2 victory tonight over the Padres. And what a night for Tom Murphy.